Okay, today we have a 2011 81278 with a customer complaint of no backlight. So we can confirm this is no backlight by taking our microscope light and shining it back here. Where's it here? Right there. And you can see there's an image there. It's hard to see, but there is an image there. So no backlight. Typically with LCD displays, you have your image and you have your backlight. So the backlight is what illuminates the LCD displays. You can actually see something. So there's several reasons why this cannot work. One, you could have a bad screen. Or two, you could have a board issue. So when diagnosing a board issue, there's a few voltages that we need to pay attention to. One is backlight output because that's relatively going to tell us what's going on in the circuit. So if we have um, 50, 30, 90, 50 volts, it's typically a bad screen or bad screen um, cable because there's no load on it. If it's 25 to 27 volts, it means it's working. Or if it is 8 to 18 volts, that means it is not boosting. So it's a DC to DC, to DC boost circuit that takes the 12 or 8 volts from PP bus G3I and changes it into 50. So we're going to check what voltage on output is here. So we have our meter here, and you can't really see that because of glare. Let me move it. There you go. Now I'm going to check voltage on backlight output here, which is going to show up right around here. And that is zero volts. So at zero volts typically means it's either there's a short or that the fuse is blown. So what we're going to do is check for a short. So our meter is in continuity mode. We're going to check for a short on the backlight output caps. And we see we have a 10 ohm short to ground there. So 10 ohm short to ground typically means something shorted. So first thing, unplug the screen because the screen is a very common cause of short. So the screen is unplugged. We're going to check again. And it's still shorted, so we know we definitely have a board issue. Can't really fix the board when it's in the computer, so I went ahead and pulled it out so we could work on it. For anyone wondering, I went ahead and checked backlight output voltage and um, resistance to ground at these two caps right here. These are our backlight output um, capacitors right before it goes into the screen. So we do see we have a little bit of corrosion here. Now, one of my main questions here is, is the fuse going to be blo blown? So the backlight fuse, as you know, on this model or on these MacBooks, doesn't typically blow. It's usually the connector melts or something melts. So let's check this fuse. And what do you know? The fuse is actually bl blown, so the fuse actually did its job. So this corrosion right here, although this is corroded, and you could say this is liquid damage right here, this doesn't look too bad. Like, this does not look anything that would concern me. So let's go ahead and look. So here's our backlight driver. That's probably not it. Could be, but kind of doubt it. So let's look on the other side of the board now. And let's look at the rest of the backlight circuit. So. That's going to be somewhere around here. And, hmm, what do we have here? This doesn't look too good, does it? So this looks like we have corrosion here. So let's go over to the schematic and the board view and see what this stuff does. So switch over to display capture, and let's do that. Okay, we have our board view open here, and we could see that this was fairly corroded. This is... Looks like going to be something for PP1V5SO, and the board actually turns on, so I really don't care too much about this. But we also saw these two caps right here were corroded, and these are for PPV out SW LCD backlight. That sounds kind of important. Here's D7701 as well, which is the backlight output diode, kind of important. Then we saw this chip was really corroded, and especially this capacitor right here was corroded. And this is for, what do you know, LCD backlight. So this could definitely have an issue be related to our issue. So if we look at the schematic at this, we can see that this is going to be our backlight uh, MOSFET. So pull this up. So yeah, so here's our input to the backlight circuit, PP bus G3 hot. Here's our MOSFET. Here's a couple transistors. Here's our driver. You know, nothing too crazy. And we see this is completely destroyed by liquid. So there's a couple things we can do here. We could either inject voltage and try and find the exact component that's shorted, or we can just wipe out all this stuff because we kind of know none of this stuff is good. So let's add some flux, and let's wipe out pretty much everything that looks corroded here. So let's get our hot air on, our soldering on. There's a lot of dust here too. That's okay, that's not really going to hurt anything. These capacitors don't even look that bad, so I don't think the short is on one of these capacitors. Could even be on the other side of the board. I kind of doubt it, though. I think it's going to be one of these guys. Like this coil. 
Obviously, we don't need that, and obviously the coil is not going to be shorted to ground, but it still looked kind of corroded, so we're going to get rid of it. We have our MOSFET. Backlight enable resistors and caps. Our 1v5 and chip, which is probably fine, but I don't want to take any chances with it. And there's that. See, there that that um, capacitor may have been the cause of that issue. See that? See how that pad is? It's all corroded. That could probably do it. So let's try now. Let's check and see if our short is gone. So. Why are you out of focus, microscope? Let's check again for short. And we have no short to ground anymore, so that is good. So we're going to go ahead and start replacing this stuff and see if we get backlight. First things first, we need to clean this area, wick it, and put some fresh solder down before even attempting to put new components on because soldering on top of all this junk would not be good. That's not a quality repair. So we're just going to clean this. Scrape away at some of these pads. See all this? This is no good. But if we scrape away this layer of, o layer of oxidation, we could easily solder on top of it. No issues at all. Most of this nasty stuff will clean up in the ultrasonic, too. Probably going to want to put a little solder on that via. But it's not too bad. Next thing I'm going to do is just grab my iron, some flux, and just run it around everything to pick up any remaining dirt and stuff. And all that lead-free solder that we don't want. Then we can go ahead and put um, wick it away and put the fresh components down. You don't generally want to mix lead free and leaded. It's not a big deal if you do if you do, but it tends to be more brittle. So it's best to stick with one type. Occasionally I'll do it, it's not a big deal, but try and avoid it. You don't want brittle solder joints. So there's that, let's grab our wick. Let's wick up all of this stuff. Another common thing I get is when people take away the conformal coating, they think they bridged it. That's not a bridge, you just you just took away the coating. It's not a big deal whatsoever. Don't worry about it, you know, like this. It looks like a bridge, but it's really not. It's just, just the conformal coating on the board that you're taking away. Not a big deal at all. If it makes you feel better, you can put a little green stuff after you're done, but it really doesn't matter. It's not going to hurt a darn thing being like that, so you're good. pretty good. We'll go ahead and start putting our fresh solder down. Stay in focus, microscope. There 
There's that. Okay, let's start by the MOSFET. We're going to do the coil last because the coil will melt if we put any hot air on it. So that's another thing when you're taking it off from the donor board. Do not use um, hot air. Use um, low melt and pull it off the donor that way because it will you'll ruin it the other way. So let's grab our MOSFET. Basically, we're just putting everything back that we took off. Add a little bit more flux. For whatever reason something doesn't look 100% right, we could always touch that up with the iron when we're done. I really just want this to go in place, we're good. The coil we're going to do last, looks like we have two capacitors here. And then we're done. And the diode, can't forget the diode and that just ran away. Okay, we'll put back what ran away, because you saw that cap took off that little... Um, coil there. Not a coil, a filter. Yeah, similar thing. Inductor, filter. This is actually an inductor. Looks like a filter, but it's a little inductor. We'll line that. Get some hot air on it. This one's a picky one. wants to run away. This is even on low air. I know I'll get comments saying, you need to lower your airflow, but this is actually pretty low. There we go, that's down. Now for our capacitors. One. There's two. Put some more flux in here. And now the diode. Now the coil, so we put some solder there, we want to wick away that solder, and here's why. That coil needs to sit flat for us to solder it right, so we're going to wick away the existing solder, and we are going to put it on flat, and then we'll add solder to it. Grab our coil. A little bit's fine, might even help you a little bit, but you don't want it like sticking up all lopsided, that wouldn't be good. Would work, it just wouldn't look good.
There's one side. It's right if we melt it a little bit. Sometimes you may want to consider a bigger tip too. So I have this little J tip on there right now because that's what I prefer. But if for whatever reason we don't think it's soldered well, it's always best to switch to a bigger tip just to confirm. You want to make sure you're doing a good job and not a halfway job. Come on, get hot. There we go. That should be soldered. We'll check it. Best to check something than get trolled by it later, so we are good to go. So this area looks good. Everything's here. Now, obviously this isn't going to work because our fuse is blown. So another thing I'm looking at is a backlight driver, and that looks okay. I'll let that stay for now. But this fuse has got to go. So one time an apple fuse actually blew. No, it happens more than once, but... And it happens fairly often. At least on this model it does. On the airs, no. The airs, the connector always burns before the fuse will blow. But on the A12 um, 78s, it does tend to blow. You'll get a lot of these if you... If you keep blowing backlight fuses, then you're plugging in the screen with the battery connected. Not good. Wish the scope would stay in focus, but it doesn't. Looks good through my eyepieces, but on this camera side, not so much. This is a, it's not the M scope adapter either, it's a expensive zoom adapter. Some solder there, let's grab a fuse. Little backlight fuse. Okay, now it's time to test. Okay, so we have our motherboard back in the enclosure. We're going to go ahead and plug this in. And let's see what we get. So we have a green light on the charger. We should get our fan spinning here shortly. Actually, no, because I have the battery plugged in. So let's go ahead and hit these power on pads that are right around here. There we go. Our fan is spinning. And let's see what we get. And look at that. We get a working backlight and an Apple logo. So this is fixed. Um, thank you for watching, and I hope this video helps you.